Hi guys, I'm Richard. I make videos on how to make more money with your 3D printer. Today, we're looking at five slicer settings that can improve the aesthetics of your 3D print. This is 3D printing for money. Let's get down to business. If you don't get awesome prints right off the bed or you want to improve the general appearance, these five tricks will help you make more attractive prints and most importantly, decrease post-processing involved in your workflow. Post-processing is a task that can vary from some minutes to several hours and can increase enormously the cost of your 3D prints as I briefly explained in this free cost calculator video. When making money off your prints, it's important to decrease your personal time involved in removing defects and focus on more productive tasks like developing new products, scout new trends, and find new customers. So, these settings aren't exclusive to one slicer. They're available in Cura, Prusa Slicer, Idea Maker, and many others. Also, being tuned inside your slicer, these settings are independent from layer height, nozzle width, retraction settings, and cooling. You're gonna use Cura as reference. Other slicers have similar names for these, so don't worry, you will find them. I'll give for granted that you already know how to use a slicer and you already have a good enough slicer settings with decent prints coming off your printer. If instead, still you don't have a slicing profile for your 3D printer, Download one from the website of your 3D printer manufacturer or just go on Facebook groups because these groups supply tested profiles and a good point where to start. First setting that we're going to see is one that annoys a lot of people. It is called Z-Seam. Z-Seam is where the layer starts. On vertical walls, it can appear like zits and can drive you nuts in post-processing, requiring extensive sanding. How to find your Z-Seam in your slicer is quite simple. You complete a slicing task, open preview, and investigate random layers, checking for blue travels. Right here, your layer will start and place a Z-Seam. You can't really eliminate Z-Seam, but it's an easy solution to hide it in a corner. Also ending an extrusion with a wipe movement will help hide Z-Seam. Usually wipes with values between 50 and 100% of your nozzle width are a good point where to start. If you have cylindrical items with no corners, it is trickier. Tuning the wipe distance can make wonders, but plugins like Arc Welder can mitigate the issue, but will require you to compile your firmware if it doesn't currently manage G2 and G3 command. The second setting we are going to see is infill pattern and infill percentage. Infill donates more strength to your part and a place where the next layer can build on. I saw many threads of people discussing it and there's quite a debate on which infill to use. For our purpose, printing around the clock, wanted to keep printing time to the minimum, bumping up infill percentage can increase your printing time by several hours. In years of printing, I found that Cubic and Gyroid are the best. They're about the same amount of material from the other infill patterns, but they give strength in all directions. Let's make an example. We're going to slice the low poly version of the tinker of Rodin. As you can see, the infill pattern as triangle or grid don't do much when there is a lateral force, unless you have very high infill percentage. Switching to cubic, you can see the three-dimensional patterns donate strength in all directions. Geroid is a fancy solution, but will take quite more time to print. Regarding infill percentage, for generic purposes items, I use between 10 and 12%. For functional part with intensive use, I stay around 30% and didn't see much of an improvement going with higher infills. And yes, 100% infill is a waste of time. I'm basing these numbers off my personal findings and are similar to Stefan over CNC Kitchen. He did an awesome job in his video on infills. Talking about quantity of material, this takes us to point number three. Find the right flow for your material. Flow is the way to extrusion accuracy. It accounts for extruding the exact amount of material needed to eliminate blobs, too much flow, or holes, too little flow. Flow is a parameter based on the material and will vary for each material. 
flow for PLA will be different from flow from PETG and different from TPU. A flow test takes about 10 minutes with a caliper and is the best way to ensure the right strength to a piece. Printing a part with a sub-optimal flow will generate a weaker part and overflow will generate blobs or very visible layers. So take a little time and tune your flow. Let's see point number four, support. <laughs> making the impossible possible. As the name say, supports help when 3D printing complex shapes. Even if they are very useful, I found that too many guys overuse supports, wasting material, increasing printing time, and post-processing work. If for resin printers, supports are never enough, and FPN, they are a must only in some situation, mostly when the nozzle is printing mid-air. There are some situations where less supports can be used. This cylindrical casing for a filter needs supports in these areas because it doesn't have anywhere to print. Experiment a little before slicing your file. If printed this way, it will require five hours and a half and 43 grams of material. But if you flip it 180 degrees, it will require less time and less material. Another tip for supports is to use roof feature. Being placed between supports and the printed part, it eases the support removal and I personally use it them every time, allowing me to use less percentage of supports in the prints. The next level of removing supports is to not have them at all. Point number five. As the name says, bridging is a feature that enables your printer to print mid-air between two points, substituting supports. In no slicer, this is a section on bridging, and as for flow and point number three, bridging capabilities will depend from the material. It is common that a well-tuned ecosystem made by printer and slicer can bridge also 100 millimeters for PLA in between 70 to 80 millimeters for PLA. Look at this Prusum and PET G bridging on an Ender 5, isn't it awesome? Bridging will cut down 3D printing time, using less material, and make you waste less time in post-processing, not having to remove the supports. Neat. So guys, these are my 5 tricks to 3D print with less post-processing and shave a little printing time. What are your ways to 3D print faster besides using bigger nozzles and meteor layer heights? Let me know in the comments. Now go out there, tweak your settings and make more money with your 2D printer. Thank you for watching, stay sharp, stay safe, see you in the next one. Hey, want to make more money with your machine? I condensed your experience and will help you move faster your 3D printing operation. This is the book to read, enjoy.